Say hello to the camera. Say hello. Okay, she does not like that. I'm gonna let her go now. <laughs> Hello everybody. I have been wanting to make this video for quite a bit of time now, but I haven't really felt like it. I've been procrastinating, but I'm finally going to make this video and it's just going to be basic care, what you need to know, tips, all of that on rabbits. So it's maybe going to be a long video, not quite sure yet, but we'll figure it out as we go along. So first things first if you don't already own a rabbit would be picking out a rabbit so there are a large variety of different breeds coat types sizes everything of rabbits you can think of they have the dwarf rabbits they have Flemish Giants loppy eared everything you can think of it really just depends on what rabbit is the right fit for you I tend to like bigger rabbits so anything above like five pounds I like I know some people like the rabbits smaller not for me, I feel like I would step on them. Every single rabbit has their different needs, like an Angora, which is a very fluffy, furry rabbit. They are gonna need to be groomed a lot more than say a short-haired rabbit. There are some breeds that have different temperaments than others. Some may be more skittish of people while other breeds are a lot more cuddly. I have two of the same breed of rabbit though. They are half Flemish Giant, a quarter Angora, and a quarter Lionhead. They're, they're a mix, they are a mess. Anyways, it can also depend on personality. Salem, she bites a lot, um, but she does like being picked up. She does very well with being picked up, but she's not a huge cuddler. She likes being pet, but only for a few seconds, and then she bites you. Meliodas, on the other hand, absolutely hates being picked up, but he is the sweetest rabbit I've ever met. He loves being cuddled. He'll sit there with you for hours. He will sleep on your chest, and he's never bitten me. Um, I don't think he's ever bitten anybody, honestly. He doesn't bite. Where should you get your rabbits? In my opinion, it is best to stay clear of places like Petco and PetSmart. Those places get their animals from a mass breeding facility. Basically, they overbreed their animals so much, a lot of them die, they have horrible temperament, they have horrible health conditions, and you never truly know their background, honestly. I have nothing against Petco or PetSmart employees. Don't take it that way. It's not their fault. But these stores themselves get them from bad people and that is not an industry that we should support. Sometimes you can find rabbits at just your regular shelter. If you walk in and there's a rabbit there, you can most of the time adopt it. Some people just don't want their animals anymore for whatever reason and they surrender them to the shelter. Another place you could look is websites like Pet Finder. Most of those animals are people who got rabbits and then realize that they can't care for them like they thought they would and it's honestly better for them to put them on pet finder than say just releasing them into the wild because domesticated rabbits will absolutely not survive in the wild nobody could ever convince me otherwise because it is scientific fact a domesticated rabbit will not survive in the wild well, a lot of people may disagree on this one with me but you can also go to an ethical breeder now some people just think that all breeders are bad but my opinion they're not all bad some breeders really care about the temperament and the health of their animals, and those are the breeders you want to go to. Good breeders will not breed their animals more than once or twice a year. That is what you need to look for. Be sure that you stay clear of backyard breeders. Those breeders are just in it for the money. They don't care about the temperament. They don't care about the health. They just want to make as much rabbits as they can so that they can make more money. If you go to a breeder's house to pick up a rabbit and you see that they're in disgusting and tiny enclosures and they're outside and they're wire bottom cages, if they look like they're in bad condition, do not buy from them. Do not promote them making more rabbits because it may be sad to leave an animal in a neglectful situation like that but think about it if you're giving them money they are going to do that to more animals it's a lot of people don't understand a lot of the supply and demand thing if you do not buy from somewhere that is unethically treating animals they're not going to do it anymore it's it's simple supply and demand it's economics you know there are some amazing rabbit rescues out there. They're not very common since rabbits are not a very common pet, but I will put a link in the description for some random little rescues out there or whatever. We talked about where to get rabbits and the best rabbit for you. You are going to want to make sure that before you pick them up, you have some type of enclosure. Now those tiny little pet store cages, those are not going to cut it. I promise you those are way, way too small. The best option, in my opinion, is to free roam. 
both of my rabbits are completely free roam through bedrooms, okay? They get all the space that they want. They don't have a single cage other than that no-no gate over there. That no-no gate is just there so that Salem cannot get into any cord. She can't get under the fish tank. She can't reach her food. She can't reach anything I have under there. But other than that, the entire room is her space. Now, if for whatever reason you cannot free roam your rabbit, say that you have a dog or a cat that just does not get along with your rabbit at all, another great option would be an X-Pen. That's actually what the no-no gate over there is. It is just a dog X-Pen that I have taken apart and wrapped around the fish tank. Now, in the description down below, I am going to put a few Amazon links for some dog X-Pens if you want to look on there. There are some ranging from like $20 to $200. It all just depends on what works for you and what your price range is for that. But if you are not going to free roam, you should definitely get an X-Pen. There's no reason a rabbit should be kept in a tiny cage. This is another thing that a lot of people are not going to agree with me on, um, but personally, my beliefs rabbits should not be kept outside. Now some people are going to come back with, oh well wild rabbits are outside. Domesticated rabbits and wild rabbits are actually two totally different species. If you live in America like I do, most of the rabbits you see outside are going to be an eastern cottontail. That is basically the only rabbit native to America is the eastern cottontail. They are actually a totally different species than domesticated rabbits. Also, those rabbits only have a lifespan of about one to two years. If you are properly caring for your rabbit, they can live up to 14, 15 years. Some breeds live a little less, but I don't think they go under seven years. So if your rabbit is dying by the time it's like three, that's that's not good. That's, that's definitely not good. I've actually read some studies that keeping your rabbit outside can considerably cut down their lifespan, almost by half. So if you truly want to take care of your rabbit and you want them to live a long and healthy life, it is so much better for you to keep them inside. And if people always come back at me, oh, well, we can't keep them inside because this, I'm sorry, but you really shouldn't have a rabbit. You know, there's, if you cannot properly give an animal what they need, you really should not have them. That's just, I'm sorry, but it is. I never understand how people think that they can afford those $200 tiny itty bitty cages, but they cannot afford a $30 X-Pen. That to me, if you can't afford a $30 little X-Pen, you should not be having a rabbit because there are a lot more things that are going to be expensive in that rabbit's life. In your rabbit's area, like I said, you're going to want a litter box, you're going to want a litter bowl, you're going to want some kind of food bowl, you're going to want some type of enrichment or toy in there for them, something like that. You may want to put something on the ground if you either have tile or wood floor or if you have carpet you don't want them to eat because mine hate wood floor. I don't know if it's because they have fluffy feet because they're part Angora, but they slide around on wood floor so they hate it. So in their area, since they are prey animals, you're going to want something for them to hide in. I personally, my rabbits love this, but those cat litter boxes that are the ones that are like have the head on it, I take the lid off, like not the lid, but the little swingy door thing that some of them have and I put like a blanket down in there and Meliodas loves it. Salem doesn't really hide under things. She doesn't, she's weird like I said. She doesn't like hiding in things. She just like laying on the ground. Um, she does have under my bed if she truly wants to hide, but you're gonna want something that your rabbit feels secure in. Another question that I get, how do they not poop all over the floor if they're free room? Fun fact, you can easily litter box train a rabbit. So that moves us on to the next topic of litter boxes. Now, don't go to Petco and get those little corner litter boxes or anything like that. Those are a ripoff and they're not big enough, honestly. You want a litter box that's big enough that your rabbit can spin around in very easily. But what you actually put in the rabbit's litter box is entirely up to you, except don't use normal cat litter. That can be very dangerous to their lungs. It can be extremely harmful if they ingest it. Just don't use regular cat litter. I know some people that use hamster bedding. Some people use puppy pee pads. I, me personally, I use pellet cat litter. Um, you can get big giant bags of it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. So it's really easy for me. And also it kind of like soaks up any smell that could be in there. And I don't have to change the litter box as often as I would with like noobs paper shreddings. Honestly, it would be a lot easier to clean if my rabbits were okay with having puppy pads in their litter box, but they eat it. Like no matter what I do, if I glue it down, if I stick it down, anything, they will eat it. Box training a rabbit is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is whenever they poop on the floor, pick it up and throw it in the litter box. And eventually they'll learn, hey, that's where my poop goes. I'm gonna go poop over there. 
putting their hay in their litter box will encourage them to go into their litter box more and use the bathroom there because rabbits are weird. They like to eat while they poop and pee. To me it's a little strange but I mean that's them. They're strange animals. Some rabbits are a bit stubborn like one of my rabbits Meliodas. He did not catch on. He was pooping everywhere. But if you fix a rabbit, it'll be much easier to litter box train them because most of the time that they're pooping or peeing everywhere, they're trying to mark their territory. And if you fix them, they're not going to do that as much. Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you doing? She's staring at a wall. She, I, I don't know if she thinks she's blind. So that brings us on to our next topic of vet care. Now you cannot just take your rabbit to a regular dog and cat vet. There is a lot that goes into caring for rabbits. They're a bit complicated. So you're probably gonna have to either go see an exotic vet or say a farm vet. Choosing to fix or not fix your rabbits is up to you, but be aware that most female rabbits actually get uterine cancer by the time they're around eight to five years old. and when they fix them, they remove the uterus entirely. So they're not gonna have that issue of getting cancer and them dying. So it can actually greatly improve their health in the long run. Like I said before, fixing them could greatly improve how they use the litter box. It can improve their temperament because they won't wanna be as aggressive anymore. They won't feel like they have to guard their territory. If you're gonna try to bond two rabbits, it's best to have them both fixed because if they're not fixed, they're gonna wanna fight over territory. So if you want to bond two rabbits, you are going to want to get them fixed. With that knowledge in mind, it is entirely up to you whether or not you decide to fix your rabbit. Even if you decide not to fix them though, you should always know of what vet you could take them to if something goes wrong. In the description, I'm going to link a website that has a list of rabbit vets by state and by city. If you cannot find a vet near you, you can also call around the vets that you know near you and just ask them, hey, do you guys see rabbits? But always have one in mind in case something just goes wrong one day and you need to take them there. Unfortunately, rabbits are very, very sensitive with their stomachs. If they are not getting enough hay, if they're not eating correctly, if their diet's messed up, if they eat something off the ground, they can get very sick very fast. So you're gonna wanna get them to the vet as soon as you notice signs of GI stasis. Other than them obviously looking ill, another sign that you can tell if they're sick or not is their poop. If their poop is really small, if it's strung together, if it's kind of messed up, I'm gonna link another website that just talks about bunny poop. So if you wanna make sure that your bunny's poop looks okay, you can look at that link in my description. The point is to always know of a vet near you that will see your rabbits. A example that I went through recently is that my rabbit Salem was acting really weird. She was running into things, she wasn't jumping up as often, she was kind of staring off into space, and I realized that she couldn't see anything. And that could be a sign of, say, something like a tumor or an ulcer behind her eye. That could be very, very bad. So I took her to the vet and it turns out that she just has juvenile cataracts from a genetic reason. So it could have been something bad, thank God it's not. It's always a good idea to get something checked out even if you don't know for sure if something's wrong because something very, very little could be life or death for a rabbit. And if you want yours to live like you should, um, it's important that you take them to the vet if you notice something's wrong. Vets will also groom your rabbit if you're not necessarily comfortable with clipping your rabbit's nails. If for some reason you are unable to clip your rabbit's nails, you can take them to your vet and be like, yo, can you clip my rabbit's nails for me? And they'll be like, sure, it's gonna be this much. Normally it's not that expensive, but they'll like, it's gonna be this much. We'll clip your rabbit's nails for you. And be like, I right, chill. Because rabbits do need their nails clipped a lot. Um, they grow fast. Now, the most important thing to owning a rabbit since they have such sensitive stomachs is their diet. Please, absolutely please, do not feed your rabbits a only pellet diet. And if they are having pellets, they should just be a plain pellet. Do not get the little fiesta mix with the little seeds and colorful things on there. That's horrible for them. If you are going to feed pellets only just about a fourth to a half a cup a day, don't feed them too much pellets. The main portion of their diet should be hay. About 80% of their diet is hay. In my opinion, this is the best pellets you can use. There's no added soy or GMO. Um, as you can see, Salem got a hold of it, so it's a little ripped up. But in my opinion, this is the best 
pellet that there is. As I said, my rabbits only get about a fourth cup around that. Um, they don't need a lot of pellets. It's actually completely unnecessary if they're getting vegetables and hay. It's kind of just a personal choice of whether or not you want to add pellets. I do because my rabbits love it, but it's kind of like McDonald's for them. So I wouldn't overfeed it to them. Only about a fourth a cup a day. There are a few different types of hay you can use from Timothy to Meadows grass to Archard grass. There's different types. Me personally, I use Timothy hay, but I know a few people whose rabbits just do not like Timothy hay. They prefer Meadows grass, but that is entirely up to what your rabbit likes. If you have a younger rabbit, the best hay for them is Alpha Alpha, but around five to six months, you should start swapping them out for a different type of hay since Alpha Alpha has way too much calcium for an adult, it can make them sick and that's not good. Now, hay in a rabbit's diet is absolutely non-negotiable. For one, it actually wears down their teeth so that they don't have overgrown molars. Because if you know, rabbits can actually overgrow their molars and it's painful for them, it can be dangerous, it can be stabbing themselves in the mouth. Meliodas, my other rabbit, actually has that problem. I'm not sure if it's genetic or if it's because in his last home, he wasn't getting enough hay, but he does have overgrown molars. So he got his teeth filed down about a month or two ago and he actually has to go back in six months or so to get his teeth filed down again. So hay is absolutely non-negotiable. Also, another reason that it's important is that it's really good for their digestional tract. Their digestion tract needs to be constantly moving. So they should have endless supply of hay. They should never be running out of hay. Constantly need it. I personally keep my hay in the litter box. Like I said, rabbits like to eat while they poop. So if the hay is in the litter box, always keep it full, kind of push it to the side, or you can get one of those little rack things. I personally think that they're unnecessary. Some people like them. I don't, but I just put it straight in the litter box so that the rabbits can eat while they poop and they're getting all their hay. So now we know that rabbits need hay and that they should not be getting that many pellets. What else is there? You should be feeding them vegetables. For me, since I have decently sized rabbits, they get a lot of vegetables. For you, if you have a smaller rabbit, you may want to keep it around one cup, maybe so. I would ask your vet personally, but they should be getting vegetables too. I'm just biting my foot right now. What vegetables can rabbits eat and what can they not eat? I'm gonna put a link in the description for some safe foods for rabbits to eat, what they should be eating, what they definitely cannot eat. Personally, I make my own mix of veggies. So I will go to Walmart or Kroger and just get a bunch of veggies from romaine lettuce to spring mix to some cilantro. I hate cilantro, but I suck it up for them. I hate the way it smells. I hate everything about cilantro, but I suck it up for them. Um, you can add a lot of veggies. You can kind of keep it minimal, minimal. It is better to add some type of variety though. As you get a feel for your rabbit and you get to know them, you'll start to realize what they do and they don't like. Salem is actually really picky. There's things she loves and there's things she hates. I can't even list the things she hates because I forget them. My other rabbit, Meliodas on the other hand, anything he thinks he can eat, he will eat. He is not picky whatsoever. He tries to eat pizza, he tries to eat Cheez-Its. We literally have to like body block him for eating anything if we have food in the room. It's kind of bad. We actually had to get a raised bowl for him because he was eating so fast. And I promise, I don't starve him. I feed him just as much as Salem and he's actually smaller than Salem. He's just a bottomless pit. Now, if you're trying out a new vegetable and your rabbit kind of takes a few nibbles and then hops away, that doesn't immediately mean that they hate it. Rabbits are not able to throw up. They don't have a gag reflex. So what they'll do sometimes is that they will take a few bites of something and just kind of let it settle to make sure that they're not going to get sick. And if they don't get sick, they'll go back and eat it. Just another quick thing, you should always use water bowls instead of water bottles. Water bottles can hold a lot of bacteria. Rabbits drink a lot of water and normally water bottles don't hold that much water as a bowl does. Also, they're not quite getting enough water through that little nozzle. Like imagine you just ran like a big race and you're really thirsty and you're just trying to like get water and you're just like, you're not getting enough water. Your rabbit has an issue with tipping over bowls. There are heavy ceramic bowls that you can get. There are also these bowls. My rabbits can't tip them over. I don't know if some people's rabbits can, but mine can't. They're at Walmart for like five bucks. Your rabbit is already on a water bottle or you got them from somebody who used a water bottle and they're not understanding that they can drink from the bowl now a way to kind of switch them over is to take the water bottle 
put it over a bowl with water in it so that they'll kind of catch on that the water is there. And then eventually you can just completely remove the bottle and use only the bowl. If you're still trying to decide whether or not you actually want to get a rabbit, I'm just going to go through some pros and cons of owning one so you can help decide if you are ready to care for one. I'm just going to start with the pros because why not? Just, you have a rabbit. I mean, they're cute. They're adorable. I love them. They're cuddly. <laughs> That's, they're adorable. Rabbits are extremely loyal. They're not given enough credit for how loyal they are. I personally have some issues with panic attacks. I get nervous a lot. I, I'm a depressed person. <laughs> and Salem will just kind of sit there and lay with me. It's almost as if she knows that I am really down. And that's something special that you can't get with all animals. Another thing is that if you are vegan, rabbits are completely vegan. You don't have to force your dog or your cat to be vegan, which they cannot be vegan. So if you are a vegan who does not want to be feeding your animals meat, get a rabbit. Don't get a dog or a cat and force them to be vegan because that is not safe. The pro is that most rabbits are small, not mine, but most are small. And I've had rats and gerbils, mice, I've had everything like that. They don't live that long, but rabbits do. Another pro is that you can actually teach rabbits tricks. Mine know how to do spins. Salem used to know how to shake. She kind of forgot how to do it somehow. I don't know, but I make my rabbits like spin before they get their food. You can teach them a lot of tricks. Now for the cons. I'm not trying to scare anybody out of getting a rabbit, but these are realistic things that you need to know before you get a rabbit. So I'm just going to list them off. Since a lot of vets don't see them, you're going to most likely have to take them for, to an exotic vet. Exotic vets are pretty pricey. Um, it, it can be a quite expensive vet bill, but it's worth it if it means that your little friend gets to live. <laughs> they, they chew. They chew everything. Salem has an obsession with cords. She tries to eat chargers. She tries to eat any kind of cord. That's actually why we have the no-no gate, because she tried to eat the fish tank cords. I know some other rabbits that eat baseboards, some eat carpets, some will chew on furniture. They like to chew. A way that you can kind of try to prevent this is giving them chew toys. You can get cord protectors. They have actually baseboard like plastic protectors so that they're not actually chewing on your baseboard. You can get an area rug to cover your real rug so that they're chewing on the area rug and not your actual rug if you don't want it to get destroyed. Yeah, they're, they're very destructive. <laughs> Another con is that there's a lot of misinformation out there. Anytime you read something, you watch a video on something, you're always going to want to fact check this. Actually, I encourage you on this video, you should probably be fact checking me. Um, I've done my own research, but you know, you learn something new every day about rabbits. I see it a lot, especially with pet store employees. Like I said, I have nothing against the employees. It's just that sometimes the place itself gives them wrong information and not necessarily on purpose, but they can request and not request. What's the word? They can. <laughs> recommend, recommend things that can potentially harm your rabbit. And that, that's not good. And like I said, it's nothing against them. It's really against the chain that they work for, they're just not given the correct information when they really should be because an animal's life depends on it. Not necessarily a horrible, horrible con and you can definitely clean, but you're going to need to do a lot of cleaning. Um, me personally, I have an issue with my rabbit throwing hay everywhere. I don't know why she does this. She just kicks hay out of her litter box. She thinks it's funny apparently, but she tracks hay everywhere. They also shed a lot, so be ready to be picking up tufts of hair off of your floor. It'll be ridiculous. I'll be walking down the hall and there'll just be a tumbleweed of rabbit hair going around. Like it's, it's kind of crazy. Being said, they do need a lot of grooming. Like I said, especially if you have something like an Angora, which is a fourth of what my rabbits are, they get really fluffy and they need to be brushed or else they get matted. You also need to trim their nails or else they'll get too long and they can have difficulties walking. Their nails can go into their palms. There's a lot of issues that go with overgrown nails. Their con is, like I said, it depends on personalities, but the majority of rabbits do not enjoy being picked up. Meliodas will flip out if you try to pick him up. It is just coming from the fact that they are prey animals and they don't be, they don't necessarily enjoy being up high. Um, they freak out. But that can be a con for some people, especially people who love to like sit there and cuddle animals. Speaking of picking up your rabbit and cuddling animals, 
do not put your rabbit on their back. This is something very important. It's actually called tonic immobilization. It speeds up their heart rate. They get very stressed. It's a defense mechanism that makes them go completely limp. Like they absolutely go into a trance like state. Vets will do it when they're clipping their nails, but if somebody who's inexperienced do it, they can put their rabbit into shock. They can die from a heart attack. They can break their spine. It's very dangerous. If you are experienced, um, you can put your rabbits on your back to trim their nails. I try to not do it. If they will let me trim their nails when they're kind of sitting normal, I'll just do it. Sometimes I do have to put them on their backs though if it's getting a bit gnarly and they're not letting me do it. But you need to know what you're doing because like I said, if you leave them like that for too long, if you hold them the wrong way, it can go bad very fast. And like I said before, another con is that they're very sensitive. Their stomachs are sensitive if they eat something wrong. It can cause them to go into GI stasis, they can have stomach issues, they can't throw up, so if they eat something toxic, it's hard for them to get out of their system. A very fragile body, so if they're dropped, they can die. Um, they can break something and just die. They, that's an issue with children a lot that you'll see, is children will try to pick them up, mess with them, and it causes a lot of deaths for rabbits. They also have very fragile hearts, so if something scares them, they can actually have a heart attack and die. Rabbits can also have a delayed heart attack, so if something scares them at one point, about maybe a few hours later, they can die of a heart attack too. Another thing is that rabbits clean themselves like cats. You do not need to wash them like you would another animal. Absolutely never. Do not give your rabbit a bath. It's there's so much wrong with it, I can make a whole video on it. Just do not. It can lead to shock, it can lead to hypothermia. If you, for some reason, do need to clean your rabbit if they're disabled or if they just got into something, I like to just take a like water-based wet wipe and, a, and uh, an organic wet wipe and just kind of wipe them down and dry them off just a bit. If their feet are really dirty, you can give them a foot bath. A foot bath is something that's like maybe just that much water, never submerge your rabbit in water, but just that much water, kind of soak their feet in it, scrub their feet a little, and clean their feet off. But if for some reason you need to bathe your rabbit, the best way is to take either a damp washcloth, damp paper towel, an organic baby wipe, and just wipe them down. That's the best thing. Do not give them a bath. Another thing is that if you're looking for a very cuddly, up-in-your-face animal, rabbits may not be for you. Like I said, it really depends on personality and just who the rabbit is, but a lot of rabbits do not enjoy being cuddled and picked up and loved on, everything like that. Meliodas does, but he's an attention whore. Like I said, it just depends on what rabbit's for you. Some do like being cuddled, some don't. It's, it's kind of a hit or miss with them, honestly. Either they love being cuddled and they love being stroked and pet all the time like mine do or they don't want you to touch them they don't even want you to look at them <laughs> another con could be for some people i don't really see it as a con but they are going to need some toys some type of enrichment honestly you don't even have to go spend that money on some rabbit toys some are just entertained by cardboard boxes uh, you can take toilet paper rolls and stuff them with hay and that'll entertain them they can make a toy out of anything. I once walked in here and Salem was throwing around one of my shoes, but they are going to need some type of enrichment and they're going to need something to chew on. Like I said, their teeth never stop growing, so they're going to need something to grind down their teeth. So something to chew on is best. This is what I have for Salem to chew on. Um, I forget what it's called. Um, I'll find it and I'll put a link in the description. I believe it was like $80, but she uses this thing sometimes. Most of the time she just really likes these little things on here. Um, she kind of scratches at the things on the bottom. She doesn't really chew on this that much. I don't know why. It kind of makes me feel like it was a waste of money. She does love jumping on this thing though. If you look, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a whole bunch of scratches on top from her jumping around and digging at it and stuff. So if your rabbit is a big chewer, you may want to invest in something like this because Salem sometimes loves it. It depends on what mood she's in. Anyways, there is tons of information out there. Um, some of it true, some of it completely false. I could honestly go on for hours about this type of stuff. But to prevent this, I'm gonna cut that video off about here. Some of these cons that I listed um, may prevent you from getting a rabbit. If they don't, I promise you that owning a rabbit is worth it. It's worth all the work that you put in. I absolutely love my two rabbits so much. They have made such a difference in my life and that is why I'm so passionate about making sure all rabbits are safe and that they're being taken care of properly now. That's just kind of my 
life goal now is that I want to rescue rabbits. I want to make sure that they're being cared for properly. I just love rabbits. <laughs> I just realized that I'm kind of a crazy rabbit lady. Uh, yeah, it's kind of bad. Literally have a tattoo of Salem, like. Anyways, here's just the end video of it. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, comment um, if you found this video helpful, or you can comment more videos you want me to post about rabbit if you want me to go in depth about something, maybe about diet or litter training, anything like that, just let me know and I will try to get to making a video about it if I don't procrastinate anymore. If I don't procrastinate any... I, I can't speak. If you want me to, I will make more in-depth videos about anything that people want. Um, but I really hope that this video was helpful for people. Helpful? I really hope that this video was helpful for at least one person out there. Um, I hope that one rabbit is living a better life because of me. That is my hope. I want all the rabbits to be happy. But yeah, like, subscribe, share, comment, do that and all. Adios, bitchachos. What are you doing?